Okay, let me try that again. Can you hear me now okay? Hopefully this works. Let me know. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, all right. Welcome, everyone. I didn't make any changes to my settings, so I'm a little surprised on my end why uh, you guys weren't able to hear me from the beginning. I'll take a look at my OBS software later on. Hey, welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much for coming back to these live streams. The live, streams largely de the live stream largely depends on your attendance, so as long as you guys keep coming back to these streams, um, the live stream will continue, okay? So I appreciate you guys coming back and learning how to use the platform, so thank you for that. And even today, we have some exciting content. We're going to talk about database design. And I want you guys to see the process that I go through personally before I build my applications in Caspio, how I like to put together my tables. Because ultimately, uh, what it's going to boil down to is how we put our tables together to have a successful application. Okay. And what that basically means is we have to have the ability to translate the application's functionality ultimately into tables. And it's going to translate into one-to-many and many-to-many -many relationships. So we have to have the ability to break down the tables depends on the, depending on the functionality of the app. So if we're looking at, let's say, customers and orders, that's going to be a one-to-many relationship because one customer can have many orders. If we're looking at projects and tasks, one project can be linked to many tasks. So we got to be able to know how to separate our tables and how to link our tables using the primary keys and foreign keys. And today we're going to look at three different use cases. Okay, uh, we're going to be looking at an e-commerce example, uh, something similar to Amazon. Then I decided to bring up a um, education example where we have like a high school setting. We can have classrooms, we can have parents, teachers, grades, exams. And that one is going to have 11 tables. And the last example that we're going to look at today is a project management application, which also has 11 tables. And that will have clients, we'll have contacts, we'll have projects, tasks, milestones, hours, and a couple of lookup tables as well. If you guys would like to see additional database designs in the future, let me know in the chat window and maybe we can bring this live stream back and we can look at something a little bit more complex or something a little bit easier something a little bit more simpler. All right, so I know I took the note from last live stream. Someone told me that um, to show the finished product first before I show you how to build it, but I don't think it makes a lot of sense for database design just because if you look at all of the finished tables and all the lines connecting primary keys and foreign keys, uh, it might look a bit convoluted and confusing, especially to those who don't have a database background. Uh, so today I think it makes a little bit more sense to work on it together from start to finish so that you can see how I go about building my tables and how I connect my tables before I build anything else in Caspio, any form, any report, any view, or any authentication. So again, it's very important and critical to have the tables built correctly before we move on to the other objects. Okay, so let's take a look at our first example. I'm going to build, let me make sure you can see my screen and you should be able to. So let's start by building a new app. And we're not going to be importing any data today. Let's build the app from scratch. And let's begin with the e-commerce um, app. So let's open it. And again, always the very starting point of any application in Caspio is to go directly to tables. And I always like to build my tables first. Again, before I do anything else with the other objects, I'll build my tables. Now. I also don't like to put all of the fields in my table right away. The only fields that I'm really interested in having immediately are my primary keys, foreign keys, and maybe one more field to identify what that table is going to have. Okay? Because you can always come back later on and add additional fields and remove fields from that table. Really what I'm concerned about initially is to have my primary keys, foreign keys, and then establish my relationships so that I know how my tables are linking back and forth. Okay? Structure is very important. Okay, all the other fields you can worry about later. So, e-commerce. What does the e-commerce example entail? Well, usually we have some kind of a table for products. Uh, we're going to have users. We're going to have orders. Uh, we might have reviews. We might have comments. And really depends on what functionality you would like to have inside that e-commerce application. You may not have a need for the comments table, but if you're trying to copy something that Amazon has, Amazon has a list of products. Uh, each product can have many reviews. 
and each review can have many comments. Okay, so right there we have three different one-to-many relationships. Also, it doesn't matter which table you start off with first. I always like to put together my user table first. Okay, so for this table, let's build a user table initially. So we're going to have user ID. Uh, you can also call this customer ID. Okay, you're going to have your own naming convention. Really just depends on uh, what preference you have when it comes to naming your fields. For data type, I always like to go with random ID myself. Again, that's a personal preference. A random ID is a unique ID that's automatically generated. And this ID is going to be used to uniquely identify each user inside this table. Right? So John will be having a specific ID. Sarah can have her ID. Uh, Ken can have his ID, so on and so forth. And again, I don't like to list all of my fields right away. I can always come back. But for now, let's just have name, email, and password. Okay, email is also going to be a unique field, and password is going to be a password data type. Again, when I'm building my tables initially, I have no need to list all of my fields first. I just need a few key fields, and then I can save it. And let's call this e-commerce TBL uh, users. And there is my very first table. Okay. Now for the second table, let's create a table for products. Our e-commerce application is going to have products, right? So let's build a new table. And again, the very first field that you should always add to every single table that you create is always going to be the primary key. Make sure you always put that at the very top of your list. It's a mandatory field. Every single table must have it. So let's have product ID. And again, for my primary keys, I always like to use random ID. Again, it's just a personal preference. You don't have to if you don't want to. Again, it's completely up to you. Now, I need to link my products to my users. Let's say your e-commerce application, you want users to be able to list products for sale. Okay, so not only is the customer buying the products, but you can also have the customer be able to post products that they're selling. So in that case, I would list down user ID inside this field as a foreign key because I need to be able to link my products to my users that are selling those products. Okay, and this becomes a foreign key. And for my foreign key data type, it's going to be a text 255. If you've attended my training sessions before, there are some database rules that you need to follow. If you're using random ID as your primary key, random ID has a combination of characters and digits. And if you want to stamp that random ID into a different table, you have to use text 255 data type because text 255 supports both characters and digits. Okay. And again, I'm not going to list all of the fields inside this table initially. Let's just have title of the product and maybe description. Description is going to be text 64,000. Later on, I can come back to this table and add my images, date fields, status of the product, or any other field that this table might have. All right, let's save this. Okay, I cannot use description, so let's write it out. Okay, let's save it. And let's call this e-commerce TBL uh, products. And so far, we have two tables. We need to build four more tables. All right, so now let's link the reviews to our products because we know that a single product can have many reviews. Okay, so new table. Again, always add your primary key at the very top. Okay, and this is going to be called review ID. And I'm going to use my data type random ID. All right, and underneath that, now we need to link the reviews back to our users. Okay, and we also need to link the reviews back to our products. Okay, I need to know which user submitted the review for what product. So this, this table is going to have two foreign keys. We have the product ID, which is going to be, again, text 255. And then we also have user ID, text 255. So inside this table, we're going to stamp two foreign keys, one for product and one for user ID, because I need to know, again, who the review belongs to from the product perspective and who the review belongs to from the user perspective, which one of our customers left that review for what product. And then we're going to have other fields inside this table, maybe um, title of the review, comments, and maybe, I don't know, date submitted. We'll come back to this table later on if we need to add additional fields. So this is going to be text 64,000, and this can be a timestamp, and that's all we need for now. 
So e-commerce, TBL, reviews. Okay, so there's my third table. Now let's have a table for comments because each review can have many comments. So we're going to set up a brand new table here. And again, hopefully now you know, we should be adding our primary key first, comment ID, random ID. Anybody want to let me know what two foreign keys we need to track here? Let me know in the uh, comment section if you know. So we are tracking our comments for what other information from the other tables that we have currently built. User ID is one of them, very good. We need to know which user left the comment for each, not product ID. We're linking our comments back to which other table? Review, okay? Review ID. So this will have a foreign key review ID. So when you leave a comment, you're leaving a comment for the review and we know which user left the comment. Okay, and now we can just add our other fields. Let's have the comment itself. That can be text 64,000 and date submitted. And that could be a timestamp. Okay, let's save it. So e-commerce, TPL, comments. Okay, two more tables left to build. Now, when we think about an e-commerce application, it's going to have a many-to-many, -many, okay? Not only can one person purchase the product, many products, okay? So imagine you're on Amazon, you're buying a Kindle, you're buying a TV, you're buying shoes as one user, okay? But each one of those products can be ordered by many other users. So that is an example of a many-to-many, -many, okay? One order can have many products, and each product can appear in many orders, okay? So it's going back and forth, okay? Many to many, very classic example. Almost every single e-commerce type application has a many to many setup. So what I need is I need a table of orders, okay? So we're gonna have order ID, uh, and that's gonna be a random ID, okay? Inside this table, we also need to have a user ID or the customer ID because I need to know which user placed the order and then for this table, what other fields can we list here? Let's have maybe billing info and maybe shipping info for now. Now you can break that down into address, city, state, and zip. For now, I'm just going to include two simple fields uh, just so that I know uh, to reference back and know that this table is going to contain order information. Okay, And that's all this table needs to have. So let's save it. Let's give it a name. We're going to call this e-commerce. TBL orders. And a final table that we need to build is a joining table between them. Okay, so we need to have the table that's going to contain all of the orders and products, where we stamp the primary keys from both the products table and the orders table into this joining table between them. This is how we're going to be able to tell um, one order has many products, but that product can appear in more than one order. Okay, so we need our sixth table and final table. And for this one, you can just call this maybe POID, which is product order ID. Uh, you can have some other naming convention if you'd like. So we're going to have a primary key for that. And we need to have two foreign keys inside this table. We have the order ID and we have the product ID. And then maybe quantity. Okay. And this can be a number. And these are my two foreign keys. So let's save it. Let's give it a name, e-commerce, TBL. Uh, let's call this orders products. Now you could have additional tables if you had lookup tables for this application, uh, but these are mo uh, more or less the main tables that a typical e-commerce solution will have. Uh, once you have all of the tables created, my next step, what I like to do is go into relationships. And I like to connect all of my tables uh, very quickly. So. I'm going to include all of my tables here. We have table of users, reviews, products, and comments. If you haven't seen this screen before, it's just like a traditional database. If you come from an access background, it's going to look very familiar to you. Uh, you can expand and collapse tables. You can move the tables anywhere you want, however you want. And it really just depends on how you like to 
use this screen for your workflow. Some people like to work top to bottom. Some people like to work left to right. Personally, I like to work left to right in, in terms of how my tables connect to other tables. Now I need to see the name of my table. So let me just expand my tables a little bit so I can see the name of the table. Okay, just trying to figure out how to get rid of this highlight that I have in my table. Let me remove it and bring it back in here. All right. Okay, so let's just expand all the tables very quickly and then we're gonna see how we can connect them. And then once I connect my tables, this is gonna give me a very good idea in terms of schema and how all of my tables are linked together. So this is always my starting point. I build my tables. I don't include all the fields in my tables. I don't care about that for right now. The only thing I care about is that I have the right structure in place. I've normalized my tables and data and I know exactly how all of my tables are linked. Okay, other fields can easily be added by going back to the table design and including them inside a table. Your primary and foreign keys, however, cannot. Okay, so last thing that you want to do is get to the point where you've built 10 data pages. And if you haven't set up your tables correctly from the start, you might have to delete some data pages and you might have to delete some tables. Okay, and I don't want anyone to get to that point because you're going to get flustered, I promise. Okay, so if I can give you some advice here initially, always spend a little bit more time on table design to make sure you have all the tables built correctly because later on you can expand upon that easily and be able to include other tables if your application requires it. Okay. All right, so let's see how we can link all of our tables. Okay, so let's move the products table down here. Let me start off with my users table. Usually I'll have my users tables on the left hand side and we have the ability here to join these two tables by clicking on the field first, okay, and just moving this line over to the other table and letting go, okay. This is going to bring up this pop-up window for relationship setting. Initially, I don't really play around with the settings right away. Caspi is automatically going to identify the relationship type for me. It's going to be a one-to-many, okay, so we're going to hit create, and it's going to show you that a single user or single customer is linked to many products meaning that one customer can list many products if they're selling multiple products, one to many, okay? Next thing that I like to do is let's link the reviews to the products, okay? We know that one product can have many reviews, okay? So I'm going to drag the product ID, which is the primary key, to the foreign key inside a reviews table. Let go, once again, you're gonna see a one to many. Now we also see that one user can leave reviews. Okay, so what I'll do at this point, instead of going over my tables with the line, I'll just reposition my table up and this one down a little bit. And I can also collapse this table a little bit more just to make room for other tables. And then I'll join this line from the users table to the reviews table. Let go and hit create. So if we think about it here, this actually has a many-to-many -many relationship, okay? The user can leave many reviews for a single product, but that product can have reviews from other users. So that's an example of a many-to-many, -many, where we stamp the product ID into the reviews table and the user ID into the reviews table, which is the joining table between these two tables. Example of a many-to-many. -many. Okay, now we're going to look at one more example of a many-to-many, -many, but before we do that, let's link our comments table to our reviews, because again, each review can have many comments. If you've ever left a comment on, on Amazon or read comments, you know that each review can have many comments. So let's stamp the review ID over to the review ID field in the comments table. Let go. Once again, that's going to carry a one to many. And again, once we rearrange these tables a little bit, each user can leave many comments. So we're going to drag this line over to our comments table, let go, and hit create. The reason why I really like this screen myself personally, uh, especially if you've worked with databases before, it really lets you know how all of your tables are linked. And what it comes down to, what it boils down to, is these one-to-many and many-to-many -many relationships. And you have to have the ability to translate the functionality of the app back to the tables and how all of your tables are linked. So if you have, uh, let's say, patients, visits, and doctors, that's an example of a many-to-many -many because one doctor can see many patients, 
but that patient can be seen by more than one doctor. So that's an example of a many-to-many, -many, and you will need to have three tables. So every time you have a many-to-many, -many, you'll need three tables. If you have a one-to-many, you will need two tables. Okay? All right, let's see how all of all the other stuff that we have um, ties back into our application. So um, we have the user ID. We need to stamp the user ID into the orders table because we need to know which user placed the order. So we're going to drag this line over to this table and let go. That's going to be a one to many. Okay. Now each order can have many products. Okay. So I need to stamp the order ID into the order ID foreign key inside the orders and products. Okay. Very simple. Hit create. And the final one here is we want to stamp the product ID inside a joining table between them. So we're going to stamp the product ID inside the orders and products. So let go and hit create. All right, once again, one order can have many products, okay? And each product can appear many times in many orders, okay? It's an it's example of a many-to-many. -many. And here's your database designed for an e-commerce solution, okay? Let me know if you have any questions based, based on what you're seeing. This is a very simple setup. You just have to be able to translate the functionality into tables because once you have the tables built correctly in Caspio or any other database environment, it's very easy to build all the other functionality on top of the tables. Okay, if you ask me, tables can be somewhat challenging if you don't have a database background. Okay, but just think about it this way. Every time you have a one-to-many, you need two tables, many-to-many, -many, three tables. And all you're doing is linking the tables back and forth between the primary keys and the foreign keys. All right, you guys ready for a more complex example? We're gonna look at an example for high school now and how we can link our tables. And we're gonna build 11 tables. This one has six tables. Let me know if you have any questions. But this is always my starting point, okay? I'll build all my tables. I will link all of my tables, and then I'll go back to my tables and add the remaining fields that I need. And this becomes the blueprint of the e-commerce solution that I'm going to build in Caspio. Okay? Was that clear? Let me know if that wasn't clear. Yeah, you can always review these videos. Uh, each, each live stream is being recorded and it's gonna be available on our YouTube channel so you can always find the video and, and review later on. Absolutely. All right, let's take a look at something a little bit more complex. So we're gonna call this EDU High School Design. I don't know, just a very arbitrary name. Don't pay too much attention to my names. We're gonna hit finish, we're gonna open and again, go directly into our tables. So if we think about the design for, let's say, a high school setting, uh, you can choose to have parents have a login to be able to review their kids' grades, uh, attendance. Um, you're going to have classrooms. You're going to have grades. You're going to have courses. You're going to have exams. Um, there's some many-to-many's here as well because not only can a single classroom hold many students, but that student can go to a different classroom as well. When I say classrooms, I'm thinking about classroom numbers like 83A or 22B or something like that. Then we're going to have grades. When I talk about grades, I don't mean exam grades and scores. I mean 9th grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, senior year, 12th grade, etc. cetera. Uh, then we could have courses because each grade will have multiple courses. You could have 9th grade have geography, bio, and chemistry. 10th grade can have AP history and all of those other courses. Right? And we want to be able to track exams. There could be a type of an exam. It could be a midterm. It can be a quiz. It can be a final exam. Um, and then you have the name of the exam itself. And then finally, you have the test scores, where we track two foreign keys, actually, the course ID, the exam ID, and the student ID. Okay? And of course, all the scores, marks. You know, did it get an A or a B or a C for what student, what course, and what exam? Okay. All right, so let's begin by maybe including a parent table. Let's say our application is going to have the ability for parents to log in. 
So parent ID is going to be the very first field. Underneath that, again, just list down just a few fields initially. You could have name, you could have email and password. Email field is always unique and password field is going to be a special data type. We want the parents to be able to log in and see their students' accolades or some other things that they've done inside the classrooms, you know, grades, exams, all that good stuff. Save, and we're gonna call this edu tbl uh, parents. All right, next table we're gonna have is students. We also want the students to be able to log in and be able to see their grades. So student ID. Now we need to link our students back to our parents. Okay, so when a parent logs in, they only see information pertaining to their student, their, their kids, right? So we need to have the parent ID as a foreign key inside this table. And then for students, why don't we also have the name, email, and password. So email is gonna be unique. Password is going to be a special data type. And let's save the table. EDU, TBL, students. All right, let's have our third table, which is gonna be the teachers. So we're gonna have teacher ID. Of course, we need to have the teachers be able to log in too, so they can see the attendance, they can see their students, and they can also post a score for exams, right? So this is going to be a random ID. And then we have, again, name, email, and password. Unique, and password, and save. So let's call this edu, tbl, uh, teachers. All right, so what's the next table that we can build? So let's build a table for classrooms, okay? Because each teacher needs to be linked to many classrooms. It's gonna be a one-to-many. Okay, the teacher can teach from 22B, but he or she can also teach from 22A. You can have different classrooms. They don't have to belong to a single classroom, okay? So let's have a table of classrooms. So classroom ID. Again, that's gonna be a random ID. Uh, we need to link our teachers to our classrooms. That's gonna be text 255. Now inside a classroom table, we're also gonna have another foreign key, which I'll explain later on, which is gonna be the grade ID. Okay, which is gonna be a one-to-many between the grades. Each grade will have many classrooms, right? So ninth grade will have many classrooms. 10th grade will have many classrooms. 11th and 12th grade will also have many classrooms, okay? So I'll explain this foreign key a little bit later on because I don't have the table for grades built yet, built yet but we will in just a minute. That's gonna be the very next table. All right, so grade ID. Uh, let's have um, the year and maybe some remarks for the classroom or name of the classroom, things like that. So we're gonna call this edu tbl classrooms. All right, before we build a grade table, let's build the joining table between the classrooms and the students. Okay, so that's gonna be a many-to-many. -many. That's our third table that's going to join the classrooms with the students, right? Because not only can one classroom hold many students, right? But each student can go to more than one classroom, right? Spanish class could be 22B. English class could be 22A. They're walking around the campus, they're going to a different classroom, right? So let's build that joining table between them. So for my primary key, why don't we call this um, classroom student CSID. It's gonna have a random ID, and now this table needs to have two foreign keys. Anybody wanna guess? Yes, I always use the random, wouldn't student ID be unique? Uh, yeah, did I not make it unique? I'll go back to my table in just a moment. Thanks for catching that, uh, Sri. I'll go back, maybe I forgot to change my data type inside the student's table, good catch. Okay, I'll go back in just a moment. Uh, you always use random ID because other videos have auto number. Yeah, I recommend using either random ID for the primary key or GUID. They're much longer IDs and much more secure. Okay, auto number I usually use if I have a simple lookup table. I'll use auto number for lookup tables, but for my main tables, I always like to use random ID or GUID. Leaning heavily towards random ID because that's just 
what I've used uh, for a very long time now. Before we introduce these other ID types, random ID, GUID, back then, years ago, Caspio only had auto number. So I think that's why some of the videos only use auto number. I was used to using auto number for the longest time. But now I've switched over to random ID. All right, so for this table, we're going to have um, classroom ID, which is going to be the uh, foreign key, and the student ID will also be the foreign key. Okay, and then um, this table doesn't really need to have any other fields. I think these are really all we need for this table. So we're going to go ahead and save this and call this edu classroom students. Let me go back to my students table. Somebody pointed out here that I did not make it a random ID. Good catch. Thank you. So that needs to be a unique field. Thank you, Sri. Let's go back to tables. And the next table that we can build is actually the grade table. Okay, so let's have the grade ID. Let me make sure I select my random ID this time. Okay. By the way, how you're going to be able to catch the fact that you didn't make that a random ID for my student ID. Remember how I left it a text 255? If I went to my relationship screen, I wouldn't be allow allowed to join those lines. That would signal to me that, hey, you didn't make that a unique field. So go back to your table, make it a unique field, and then you'll be able to join those two tables. Okay. So then we have the name of the grade and maybe description, which can be text 64,000. And let's save it. Let's give it a name, EDU TBL grades. All right, next let's build the courses. Now courses are going to tie back to our grades table. It's going to be a one to many, okay, because each grade can have many courses. Okay, so we want to break that down as well, right? In ninth grade, you can have many different courses. In 10th grade, you're going to have different courses. 11th, 12th grade, all going to have different courses. And they're not going to be the same as the ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th, and 12th grade. So we're going to have course ID. Once again, always the primary key. I know I'll keep repeating myself, but um, that's how I learned, just to repeat in my head. Primary key always goes at the very top. Then we're going to have grade ID, which ties back to the grades table. And then for the courses, we could have the name and description as well. So name of the course and description of the course. Text 64,000, save it, and let's call it EDU TBL courses. How many tables do we have? We have seven tables, so that means we need to build four more. So next one that we're going to build is the attendance. Now, attendance is simply going to be linking back to our students table. So we're tracking the attendance of each student. Okay, this is a very simple table. It's a one-to-many. So attendance ID random ID. Uh, let's have, um, we can just, yeah, back to the students table. So that's going to be student ID. That's the foreign key. And then maybe you want to be able to track this with, let's think about this for a second, maybe just a status. Status is good. And you can have this be a checkbox. So if the student is present, they're attending the class, so you can just check it off. And that's going to be inside the attendance table. Let's make sure this is correct. Yeah, it looks good. Save it, edu, tpo, attendance. All right, three more tables to build, and we're going to be done with this database design. And for this one, we're going to have all about the exams. Okay, so we need the exam type, we need the exams themselves, and we need the exam results. All right, let's do this very quickly. So let's start with the exam type. So et, exam type, id, that's going to be the primary key. Let us choose random ID. And then for exam type, we could have just the name of the exam. You know, it could be a midterm, it could be a quiz, it could be a final exam. These are all the different types of exams that we're going to have. Actually, maybe better just to call this exam type ID. Let's do that. Save it. EDU, TBL, exam types. All right. Our 10th table are going to be the exams themselves. And the exams are going to tie back to the exam type, right? So if the exam name is, I don't know, fall 2022 midterm, right? What type of an exam is that? It could be a quiz. It could be a final exam. Okay, so exam ID. Let's 
going to be a random ID. Exam type is going to be the foreign key. And then for your exam itself, you probably can also have the name and maybe the start date of the exam. So that's going to be a date field. And let's save it. Give it a name, edu, tbl, exams. And one final table left is just the exam results. Okay, so we now need to be able to track two foreign keys, uh, sorry, three foreign keys inside the final table. The student ID, the exam ID, and the course ID. Okay, so let's do this. New table. So we're going to call this, um, I don't know, let's just call it exam result ID. And that can be a random ID. So we have the student ID. We have the exam ID and we have the course ID. And then you can have your grades, your scores, whatever you decide to call that, maybe a mark or marks. And that could be a number or it could be a different data type depending on the localization or the region. So if you are in the, if you live in Europe, they use a system of one through five. If you live here in the United States, we have F through A, okay? So it's depending on the region and how you want to be able to track those marks and scores. So let's save this table now and let's give it a name, EDU TBL uh, exam results. Guys, let me know if this is helpful. Okay, hopefully, I know, it, I know it can be confusing when it comes to database design and how tables are linking back and forth and what fields you need to have. But again, it, it makes sense once you get into the relationship screen and start connecting your tables. That's when you actually can see the visual and the blueprint of the app and how everything links. But you got to be able to know how to break down these tables depending on the use case and functionality. Okay, some, some examples are more complex. Others are a little bit more simple. It just depends on the scope of the application and how many tables it might have. Sometimes tables have 15 to 20 tables. Okay, but again, it all boils down to one to many and many to many. Okay, so let's go into our relationships now. Okay, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for the feedback. All right, let's see how we can link all of our tables together. Okay, and then we're going to get into our final uh, use case, which is project management. Many of us can relate to it, and it's going to, I think project management is going to be a little bit more relatable because most of us have used a lot of project management tools out there. So let's begin. I always begin with my user tables. So we have the parents, uh, we have the students, and we have the teachers. Okay. I'll move all these tables here to the left so that we can see them. Also, one recommendation that I have, you don't have to do this way if you don't want to. I always like to put my foreign keys underneath my primary keys. Some people have a preference of putting all of their regular fields and then they put the foreign keys at the very bottom of their tables. That works just fine too. But the reason why I like to put foreign keys underneath the primary keys is because there's so much wasted space here. I don't really need to see the regular fields in my tables. Really the only fields I'm really um, interested in seeing here are the primary and foreign keys because now I can collapse my table and that opens up so much more space for other tables that I can include in this window. Now you're going to be able to scroll up and down if you have even more tables, but it's just cleaner in my opinion. But again, that's just my opinion. Okay, so we can begin by including our attendance. That's a very simple one-to-many, okay, that joins our students to our attendance. Okay, so you can see the student ID is going to link back to the student ID in the attendance table. Now that's going to be a very simple one-to-many. Each student um, can attend the class as many times, and we're simply just tracking the attendance. All right, there's also a relationship between the parents and the students. You can see the foreign key ID here down below. Okay, so we're just going to drag this line over to the parent ID and let go. Each parent can have many students or many kids. All right, very simple. Uh, let me take a look at when do you recommend, it's a question, when do you recommend to make a new table rather than to try to load up a table with a bunch of fields? When do you recommend to create a new table? So 
Before I begin building my application in Caspio, I already know, at least for the initial version of my application that's gonna go, gonna, that's gonna go live, I know exactly the use case and the workflow that my application is going to have initially when I wanna go live, okay? Once I have that in mind, then I will build my tables right away. I'll build all of my tables, okay? I won't even go to this relationship screen until I've built all of my tables first. You can if you want to, you can break that rule, that's fine. If you, let's say you build two or three tables and you feel more comfortable coming here and connecting your tables, you can do that. You can go back and forth, that's perfectly fine. But I've come to, I've gotten used to just building my tables first, all the tables that I'll need to have, then I'll go to this screen and I'll link all of my tables using these lines. That's just my own um, way of doing it, okay? Hopefully that answers the question. Um, I, I mean, if I could, if you want me to make a recommendation, I would recommend that you build your tables first, and then you join the tables using these lines. But I understand that a, a lot of people don't understand database design, and for some people it's easier to build two tables, connect them, go back to tables, build the third table, come back here, connect the third table, and then just connect one table at a time. Yeah, so don't start making tables on the fly, okay? You should at least know what tables your application initially is going to have. So you have an idea of what you want to go live with, okay, the beta, what's going to go live initially, and those tables need to be set up correctly. But they need to be set up correctly in order to make room for other tables in the future, okay? All right, sounds good. All right, what other tables do we have? So we have the classroom. Okay, so here's my classrooms table. Now the way classroom is going to link back is back to our teachers. So let me move this table down. We might have to rearrange these tables later on, but for now, we know that a single teacher can belong to many classrooms. Okay. Let's also include the grade. We can include that right now. So let's include the grades. Where is my grades? Right here. Let's move that down. Okay, so one grade can have many classrooms. That's a one to many. Okay, hopefully everyone here has been to high school and understands the workflow here. Like ninth grade, tenth grade can have many classrooms. Okay, that is uh, going to be a one to many into the classrooms table. Okay, uh, what other table can we include next? Well, let's include the courses table. Okay, a single grade can have many courses. Okay, that's a one to many. Okay. Hang on one second. This is supposed to, not to that field. Sorry, wrong field. That needs to tie back to my grade ID field. There we go. That's better. Okay. Let's now include the many to many relationship between the students and the classrooms. I'm just going to move this, collapse this a little bit. Let's move this here. So I need to stamp the student ID into the classrooms, the students, that's a one to many, and we also want the classroom ID to stamp into that table as well. And now this table becomes a many to many between the students and the classrooms. It's a joining table between them, okay? Because we can track many students can belong to one classroom, but that one student can belong to more than one classroom. So many students to one classroom and one student to many classrooms. Okay, it's a many to many. All right, and the final three tables that we have are the exam tables. So we have the exam types. So let's include that to our exams. Here it is, over here to the right. So we're going to join these tables together. Let me come over here. Exam type. All right, let's try that one more time. There we go. So it's a one to many. A single exam can have many different types of exams, right? We have quizzes, we have midterms, we have final exams, etc. And then we have the exam results. So let me move that table over here. And inside this table, we're going to have three different foreign keys. So we need to tr track the exam results for our students. So we're going to drag the student ID over to this table. Join that. For what exam? We're going to join that. 
and for what course. We're going to join that. Okay. And now you can just slowly start rearranging these tables however you want, whatever makes sense to you. Just going to move them to the left a little bit. Again, I like to work left to right. A lot of people like to work top to bottom, but this is just my own preference. So that I can see all of my tables inside my schema and how all of the data is linking back and forth. All right, and from here you can just save the layout. Okay, any questions on this database design? I know it's a little bit more complex, but ultimately that's what you're going to have to do. You know, you got to learn how to... Um, Okay, so go over additional relationship settings in the live session. Please, if possible, enforce referential cascade delete. Okay, sure. I can briefly talk about that very quickly. It's actually very simple. Um, so, for example, let's say you're looking at the relationship between the students and maybe the attendance. So, let's take a look at this relationship. Okay. So, if you enforce referential integrity between these two tables, Okay. If you try to delete a student and that student has many entries in the child table of attendance, you're not going to be able to delete that student. Why? Because that student has linked entries in the child table, in the attendance table. So it's a, it's a guardrail. Think about it that way. If you enforce the referential integrity between these two tables. However, if you leave this unchecked okay, and now you delete that student and that student has many entries inside the attendance table, you're going to leave a lot of these records orphaned. They're not going to belong to anyone now because you deleted the primary key from the parent table. So usually when I build my applications, typically I will enable this checkbox. I will enforce my referential integrity just as a guardrail to prevent me from accidentally deleting some entries from the parent table if that entry has linked entries in the child table. Okay. Cascade delete, be very careful with this checkbox. Okay, I only use this checkbox um, if I'm trying to purge a lot of data or delete a lot of data at once. Because now if you delete a student from this table, and let's say you have 10,000 entries in the child table that belong to that student. Once you delete the student, you're going to delete all 10,000 entries instantly from the child table as well. If you enable cascade delete. Okay, so again, be very careful with this checkbox. I almost never have that enabled, okay? I may temporarily en enable it if I'm deleting a lot of data. And then cascade update, very simple, kind of like cascade delete. If let's say you're stamping the student ID 10,000 times inside a child table, and you happen to update the student ID in the parent table, that change will propagate throughout the entire child table as well. So now all 10,000 entries inside this table will have that same ID that you just changed in the parent table. Okay, sometimes I will have this enabled in my applications. Very hard to find a use case when you can enable this, but it's possible. Hopefully that uh, helps Sri. Let me know if there's a follow-up on that question. Is Amazon based on basic tables like this? Um, well, Amazon probably has a lot of tables, especially lookup tables. I'm sure they do. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it could be as basic as what we created today. Okay, but you have to remember, they have a lot of developers working on Amazon. So I don't know how intricate their database design is. But if I had to guess, they have those main primary tables that we built today, including additional lookup tables. Probably many, many lookup tables. Because they're most, more, more, most likely tracking a lot of things in the database. Okay. Can you build an Amazon with Caspio? Yeah, you can build a basic rudimentary version of Amazon with Caspio. But if you have development knowledge, front-end knowledge, then yeah, you can get as close as possible to Amazon. But you have to remember, Amazon has been around for a long time. They have a lot of developers. So a lot of time went into uh, creating all of those workflows on the front-end and also on the back-end. All right, let's go into our final use case that we have for project management. Hopefully, you guys are finding this helpful. Um, 
This is really what it comes down to when it comes to database design. Okay, so let's go back to the home page. Let's save this layout. And now everyone's going to be able to relate to this one. It's a project management example. So let's do, let's call this uh, PM design for project management. We don't need an underscore. Open it, go to our tables. And not all project management applications are the same. Some could be simple, some could be more complex. In my example today, we're going to have 11 tables, okay? And obviously, we need to have projects, we need to have tasks, we need to have clients, users, milestones, um, cost, hours. We need to be able to track all of that information. So again, I always start with my users table. So we're going to have users, so user ID. And we're going to do random ID for that. And let's have um, name, role, email, and password. All right, so email is unique. Password is password. Again, you're going to have other fields, maybe title, department, a phone number, address, whatever information you need to track for your users. OK, let's save the table and call this PM underscore TBL underscore users. All right, let's go with our second table. Second table, let's have clients, okay? Because each client is gonna be linked to our projects, okay? So let's have client ID. That's gonna be a random ID. Let's have the name of our client. Maybe you want your client's website. I don't know. What other information could we list very quickly? I think that's good enough for now. And let's save it, and let's call this PM TBL. Clients. You could also have the clients be able to log in too. I didn't include those two fields in here, email and password, but if you want your clients to log in and check the status of the project, you, project, you can do that. Okay, so we'll hit finish and save. Next table is contacts. Each client can have many contacts, right? So think of it like, a, like almost like a CRM example, right? One account can have a company that has many contacts. In this case, we're going to have clients that have many contacts. So contact ID with client ID. And my contact ID needs to be my primary key. And then for our contacts, we could have name, we can have email, maybe gender, maybe title, all that good stuff. PM, TBL, uh, contacts. All right, the next table that we're gonna build is the projects table. Uh, this is gonna be one of our main tables that our application is going to have. So let's have project ID. Obviously, that's always gonna be the very first field, project ID, random ID. And now inside the projects table, we're gonna have, um, actually, we're gonna have three different foreign keys, okay? We want to have the um, manager ID, so we're gonna have project manager ID. That's going to be text 255. Anybody want to guess the other two? Well, I, it's not fair for me to ask you that last one, but what's another one that we can track inside a projects table? What are we linking our projects to? To who? In this example. And we already built that table. It's one of the tables that we already built. Projects that are linked back to. So that's the user, actually. I just renamed that field to project manager ID, but that's essentially the user ID. So that's correct, that's one of them. I could also call this user ID if I wanted to, but I think when I build my project management applications, I always like to name that field this way so that I know who the project manager is, which user ID. Client, yeah, very good, so client ID. Thanks, Peter. And we're also gonna wanna have status ID, and that's gonna be our uh, third foreign key because each project will be able to have many statuses. It can be a new project, in progress, canceled, archived, deleted, all that good stuff. And then let's have project title, maybe project description, which can be text 64,000, and whatever other fields you need to have, maybe start date of the project, budget, all that good stuff, okay? Can you have multiple users assigned? Yeah, you could. You can turn this into a many-to-many -many if you wanted to via a third table. But I think for each project, usually there's one project manager 
and then you have multiple tasks, okay? And each task is assigned to a user. I'm used to having a project management application where we have a single project owner, okay? And then each project will have many tasks, and each task will be assigned to somebody else. Or one person can handle two tasks, if you so choose. All right, let's save the projects table. So PM, TBL, projects. And then let's have the project status. So uh, just a very simple ID. That's going to be random ID. And then the status itself. Let's save it. And this is going to be called uh, PM underscore project status. OK, there's our fifth table. Uh, let me take a look at my question. This is going to be the last question I'll handle for now. We're going to have time for questions at the end, but I have two more minutes and I have to build six more tables very quickly. So just bear with me. Let me take a look at my question very quickly. Do you have a use case for many to many table? Because in live stream, all the tables are linked one to many followed by a third table. So really a many to many is two one to many's. Okay, so if you really think about it, a many to many boils down to two one to many's. That's why they all look like one to many. So Caspio, when that pop-up window shows up, it's gonna say one to many. You're never gonna be able to read many to many. Okay? So all a many to many is is two one to many's. Okay? But that joining table that has too many connections, that table itself is an example of a many to many, right? Between the two other tables. The joining table between them is the third table. Yep. So if that pop-up always says one to many, totally fine. Okay? It's never actually going to read many to many. All right. What's our next table? So let's have the task table. So we're going to have task ID. Obviously, in this table, we need to be able to link our tasks back to our projects. So this table is going to have project ID because a single project can have many tasks. Okay? Now, who are we assigning the task to? So we need employee ID or user ID in this case, but that's fine. You can call it employee ID. That's totally fine. Uh, we also want to have the status ID because each, sta each um, task will have a different status. So that's going to be status ID. And we also want milestone because each task can have many milestones. Okay, you don't have to have that if you don't want to, but I'm going to step, extra step here. Uh, where I break down each task to have many milestones. One project, many tasks. One task, many milestones. Okay? So it becomes a chain effect. Like one milestone can have many of something else if you want to. Okay, let me see. Any other fields in this table? No, let's just have the title of the task and maybe task description to finish off just some basic fields. But you can see we're actually stamping four different foreign keys inside the miles, uh, the task table. So let's give it a name. PM TBL uh, tasks. And now let's have the task status table, which is a simple lookup table. So ID. All right, we're going to do random ID and status itself. Now, if your task lookup table for status is the same as your project lookup table, um, you could use the same lookup table for both, but there's a very good chance that your task status could be different than your project status. So we create two different lookup tables. And we're going to call this PM TBL task status. All right, what's the next table that we can build? Well, let's build a milestone. So milestone ID. And this table is going to link back to our tasks. So we need the task ID, which is going to be text 255. We also want each milestone to have its own status, right? So again, this is going to have status ID as well. And then we're going to create one more lookup table for our milestones. Uh, let me think for a second. Uh, this also needs to link to the project as well. Uh, let me think what else milestone is linking back. I don't think we need to link back to our task here uh, for milestone. I think what I'm trying to do is a milestone for the projects. 
Yeah, let's not link back to our task table. Milestones really need to be linking back to our projects in this case, if I'm not mistaken. I think, yeah, that's the way we're going to do that. So let's have the name of the milestone. Let's have description. So milestone description. That's going to be text 64,000. Uh, any other information we can track on the milestone? Let me think. Um, you could have deliverable. You can have due date. Those are all very typical fields that you might have. So we're just going to do that to be a timestamp. And we're going to save our table and call this PM TBL milestones. OK, we have, I think we have three more tables to build. So we need that lookup table for milestone. So that's going to have status, random ID, and PM TBL milestone lookup. Uh, very helpful to have a lot of lookup tables in your applications. That way, when it comes to dropdowns, you don't have to create custom values all the time. You just link back to your table. So don't worry if you have like five, 10 lookup tables. Very helpful and easy to build those tables once, and then you can just reuse those tables in your dropdowns and things like that. All right, two more tables left. And we want uh, the table for cost and for number of hours on the projects. So we're going to have cost ID. Um, I'll change that to random ID in just a moment. Let's have project ID. Let's have um, milestone ID. And any other foreign keys that we need to track into our cost? I don't think so. So let's have the name. Uh, you might have price times quantity. And I actually teach this in my training classes to get the total. So for price is going to be currency, for quantity is going to be number or integer, and total is going to be a formula data type. Now for the formula data type, very simple equation here. We just need to insert our price with the times attribute here and quantity. And that's going to give us the total. So when you submit this form, you capture the currency, the price, the quantity, and then in the table, you're going to calculate that, that value. This is going to be a random ID. And these are my two. Um, foreign keys for cost, right? We're tracking the costs for the projects and also for milestones. So let's give this a name. We're going to call this PM TBL cost. And then number of hours as the final table. So we're going to call this hour ID as the primary key. We're almost done. And let's have the task ID. Let's have the project ID and the employee ID. So which employees logging in the number of hours for what project and for what task? And then let's have, uh, what other information can we have um, for hours? Date, we could have time, and maybe work completed, which can be a checkbox or text field time. Let's have that be a number. Date and time can be a date and time. And these are all good. Let's save it. And let's give it a name PM underscore TBL underscore um, hours. Okay, so they are all 11 tables. And we have exceeded our one hour limit, which is fine. I'm just going to show you how to connect the tables. And then we'll be done with our live stream today. So we're, let's go into relationships. I know it can seem very confusing when it comes to primary keys and foreign keys, but you, it gets easier once you get the hang of it and how things link back and forth between your tables. Okay, I promise it gets so much easier. Uh, we have clients and we have contacts. So let's link these two tables. All right, so one client can have many contacts. Okay, let's create those two tables, connections between them. All right, let's include our user table, which is our employee table. Okay, let's, uh, let's have the table of projects. Now for project manager ID, that's really my user ID field. Okay, but I renamed that field inside this table so that I know who the project manager is going to be. So I'm just going to link that ID to my projects table and let go, one to many. 
All right, let's see our other tables here. Let's have the task table. By the way, once you have this table here, you can also now link your client to the projects. Okay, so let me move these two tables a little bit. Let's move this to the right. Let's move this here, move this down. And client ID is going to link back to my client ID. I don't know why it's not linking. Let me try that. Strange. Okay, there we go. Okay. One client can have many projects, right? Let me also include the status. So for a project, so where is the status projects table? Task project status. Let's include that table here. Very simple table. Okay, let's link that back to our projects. So ID goes here because a single project can have many statuses, right? And let's see, what else can we do here? Um, anything else with the current tables that I have here? So we have a table of tasks. So let me link my projects to my tasks because a single project can have many tasks, okay? Uh, we also wanna know who the task is assigned to, to what user, so we're gonna link back to our users table like this. Okay, we can move that to the right a little bit. And now tasks can also be linked to statuses. So we have a lookup table for tasks. Let's include that. This is a very simple one. Link that here. Create. Sorry, wrong one. That needs to link to my status. So right over here. Click on create. Okay, uh, let's include our other tables. We have milestones. So milestone will have its own status, so let's include that lookup table as well. So that's gonna link right over here. Okay, uh, each project can have many milestones. Okay, so let's link the projects table over to our milestone table. Whoops. Okay, each project can have many milestones. Um, all right, I think I'm good for that for now. Let's include other tables here. We have the hours and we have the cost. So hours are gonna link back to our tasks. So how many hours are required to create the task or to finish the task? So let's link those two tables. Oh boy. Let me see if I can move these two tables down here or just switch my tables so it's easier to line them up. All right, there we go. Okay, so that's a one to many. Uh, let's see, so this also links back to our project. All right, so we get the total number of hours it took to complete the project, and we can also have the total number of hours it took to complete the task, so we can do the calculation later. So this is gonna link back to our projects. Okay, and then we also need to know which employee is logging in the hours, so that's gonna link back to our user table. Okay, and then we have one more table, which is the cost. So that shifts things down a little bit. Let me just collapse the table so that we can see it. So the cost is gonna link back to our project. We need to know the cost for the entire project, you know, how, how, how much is it gonna cost? So let's link our projects table back to our cost table uh, for our milestones. So each milestone will have its own cost. And I believe that's really all there is to it when it comes to this project management application. This is how you link all the tables. I know it looks like a giant spider web, but believe me, that is the expected behavior. At the end, once you're done linking all of your tables together, that's really what it's going to look like at the very end. Okay, especially if you have many tables that are linking back and forth between other tables. But now you can track, the question that I had earlier when it comes to many-to-many, -many, uh, once you have two one-to-manys like this, into a third table. Now this table here is, this, this connection here is an example of a many-to-many, -many. okay? This table is also many-to-many -many between the projects and the milestone status. So this kind of becomes a many-to-many -many as well. So two one-to-manys into, one, into the third table, joining table between them is an example of a many-to-many, -many. three tables. And then you can have a simple one-to-many like this one here that we have, which is one client can have many contacts. 
that is an example of a one-to-many. Okay. So again, I know it can be somewhat challenging to do this, especially if you don't have a database background. But hopefully this was helpful, the live stream today. Uh, thank you guys so much for attending the, the live stream this week as well. If you have any questions for me now, I'm happy to answer your questions. Let me know. Um, but if I was building my project management application, and if I had this use case, this workflow in my mind, this is how I want to go live with my application, this is how I would set up all of my tables and how I would link all of my tables. Because now you can track and see, you know, one project can have many tasks. Okay, one user can be linked to a task. Okay, projects belong to clients. Each project can have a status. Okay. Yeah, so if this was a little bit confusing to some of you, I apologize. I was trying to... Uh, pace myself with the time that I have because I had three different use cases so I was kind of speeding up in some places but the video is recorded it's going to be available on our YouTube channel so if you guys want to review and watch at your own pace you can definitely do that at a later time okay for our next week live stream we're going to talk about Google Map integration uh, which came up in my previous live stream I thought it was a really good topic and we don't talk about that often enough and I think it's a lot of fun visually to be able to see the pins on a map and how we can, what we can do with that in terms of plotting the locations using geocode locations and a zip code if we have time and uh, how we can change the pins based on a different criteria. Uh, let me take a look at my question here. So clients and contacts. All right, these two. Some of your videos have one, one table and a contact is labeled client. When would you have two tables versus one for contacts and clients? So contacts and clients, um, help me out. Let me know what video I've actually joined these two together. Usually uh, clients can be contacts too, okay? Maybe a better way to, to break this down would be company to contacts instead of clients to contacts because the name is very similar between these two tables. Um, I, yeah, so I might actually do companies to contacts as opposed to clients. You know, like client Google. I could have many contacts at Google, right? So think about it that way, more like a company to contacts as opposed to, because, yeah, they are uh, very similar in my naming that I've used for this example. Yeah. Thanks for that. Hopefully that clarif clarifies it. So who has a need to build a project management application that's this complex? <laughs> to make them clients? Okay, so you have, uh, you have your users that can sell to customers, I guess, is what I would. We have contacts that sell insurance to make them clients. So you have prospects, and eventually those prospects become clients or customers, and you have some kind of an internal... Uh, sales team that sells to them. Uh, can you do a session on calendar appointments scheduling app? For example, a public submission form for daytime picker similar to Caspio demo calendar. Caspio demo calendar. Which one is that? Um, are we talking about, uh, let me see, where is it? App templates. Are we talking about the... Um, Appointment scheduling app that we have? That's the only one that I can think of that has scheduling appointments on a calendar. So let me know which one that is. Caspio Demo Calendar. On your homepage. Oh, on my homepage. So let's take a look. Save my layout. Caspio demo calendar, Caspio demo calendar, Caspio demo. Are we talking about this homepage or Caspio's homepage? Let me know, please. On Caspio's homepage. So let's go to our homepage. 
All right. So are we going to be looking through the video here that we have in the beginning, or is it somewhere down if I scroll down? Just let me know. Take your time. We'll find it. But yeah, we can do a session later on on uh, calendars uh, for appointment tracking, event management. We can definitely do something simple because we only get one hour. Um, I did have a few other topics lined up for the next few weeks, uh, but I, I can definitely add that to the funnel and to our list later down the line. I'm thinking maybe sometime in October. Try Caspio free. Try Cas or schedule it. Oh, 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 oh. So this is the, we use, um, who do we use for this? But you wanted to see something like this? Where we have a list of times, we have a calendar, and then we can book an appointment. So once I book that appointment, um, we can have that be visible on a calendar. We can have it be displayed. Or we can, where when somebody books the appointment, that time slot is no longer available for somebody else to book. Uh, Sri, do me a favor. Here's my email in the chat window, okay? Just send me a quick workflow what you're thinking, okay? Send me an email, and then I can email you back and let you know when we can squeeze that into our live stream. Remember, I only get one hour, so if you send me a long workflow, I might have to... Um, Remove a few, uh, remove uh, remove some things so that we can squeeze everything into our demo. Okay, but send me an email. I'll be happy to look at it and let you know what we can address in our live stream. But that is a good topic as well. Okay, yeah, you're welcome. Uh, let me see if there was another question. Uh, we have users, agents. Yeah, agents. Okay, good. Who call contacts? Who they convert to clients? Correct. Yep. Perfect. So agents are like the sales reps uh, who are cold calling clients. And initially, if the client doesn't convert, they're initially a prospect. We can add them into the database. And then you have a status to convert from prospect to a customer. So that would be a simple drop dropdown. Um, yeah, and then you can obviously, like a CRM, you can track where one contact or prospect, we can have many logs, right? We have email logs. We have phone logs. Uh, those are all standard inside this type of workflow. It's just a few one-to-manys, right? So one contact can have many logs, many email logs. That's a one-to-many. Or you can have multiple phone conversations. Again, that's a one-to-many because you treat each log separately. All right, let me know if you have any more questions. Again, guys, thank you so much for keep coming back to my sessions. I really do appreciate that. Uh, like I said, next week we're going to do map mashup, which is exciting because you'll get to see some nice visuals and how we plot these pins onto a map. Um, so if you do have a need for something like that, uh, we'll talk about that on Monday. And for this example, I will give you the finished application before I show you how I did it. Okay, so that you know exactly what we plan on developing in that course or in that live stream. All right, so I will go ahead and end this stream on my end. I hope you found today's live stream beneficial and informative. Uh, again, you're always going to be able to watch this at a later time. Uh, it is available on our YouTube channel, and you can see how I go about building my tables and how I link my tables back and forth using the primary keys and the foreign keys. Believe me, once you have the table structure down correctly initially, everything else will just flow much easier, okay? Uh, that includes authentications, views, and especially data pages, okay? So thank you guys so much. I appreciate the feedback as always. That's very helpful so that I know what I can improve upon and what I need to fix for the next live stream. But we are... Um, Sometimes in real time, we have to make adjustments in these live streams, depending on what questions I get and the way we want to take the live stream. All right. Thank you guys so much. Have a good day. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you next week. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.